hey how's it going YouTube so today is another day here on the juice footage channel uh, today is just gonna be an update because uh, I feel I haven't updated you guys on what's going on so we're still waiting on parts as you guys can see everything's mostly uh, installed and we're just waiting on parts uh, today I installed the intercooler reservoir um, which was a uh, pretty easy to do three bolts and three bolts that, that attach to the intercooler reservoir and two that attach to the little cross braces here. So that's done, ran all the wiring for the map sensors and EVAP lines, all that good stuff. We're still waiting for the intercooler uh, relay, the pump, some intercooler hoses and things like that. But uh, I just wanna do a quick video and let you guys know some of the stuff that I found out. So we come over here to the workbench. I have the snout of the blower here. So this part here goes bolted onto the blower like this, right? Um, you guys can see in here, I have it covered up so we don't get anything in there. The blower is in there. I'll give you guys uh, some propeller action. So basically, the snout bolts up here and you put your throttle body. So we want to keep using our KTEC 103 because it's such a nice throttle body, but we found an issue. This throttle body is too big. We can't open it. It won't open. The blade will not open because it's just too big. So it's quite obvious the difference here. The blade is just too big that it hits the bottom of the snout here. So I looked it up and this piece costs 350 bucks for the snout to accommodate a much larger 103 throttle body. So in true hot rotting fashion, I'm gonna go ahead and port this. And I figured worst case scenario, I can always buy this for 350 if I mess it up. But for now, uh, I'm gonna port it and try to make it fit. I only wish I had my uh, my hot rotting is not dead T-shirt that Dane Paul Thompson sells because that would have been really cool for this uh, little mod here because this is uh, some true hot rotting. But or we could do option B, which is put the stock ported throttle body that I had on Boogeyman, and this one would uh, fit perfectly and would open up no problem but this thing is so much cooler so we're going to go ahead and uh, port the snout a little bit and see if we can make it work that would be super cool if we can uh, so that's something that we're going to work on right now as we are in downtime waiting for parts to come in to complete the install but for the most part everything that we could do is already done except for the parts we're waiting for of course but uh yeah let's uh Let's get some porting done. Okay guys, first things first, you're gonna wanna use a respiratory mask uh, to protect your lungs and your overall health. We need, we need this thing to be about four inches. Okay, so we need about four inches. And we're about four inches. About four inches. So, that's about the O-ring right there. At about three and a half. Ballpark. It's a uh, lowering out. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to port all the way up to the outer edge. I don't think it's hollow on the inside, so I think we're okay. I'm going to start off with some of these uh, Mac Tools carbide uh, bits. Uh, I don't have aluminum ones, but uh, they should be okay if we dip them in some oil. They should be okay. It'll prevent it from getting clogged up too soon. It won't be much that we're doing, so I think we're okay. Okay, so the respiratory mask is going on. I have a microfiber on the bottom. It's gonna help trap some of that debris so I can throw it in the trash easier.
Um, I just finished porting the snout on the 2300 Magnuson and it came out pretty good. It now clears the KTEC 103. It opens and closes uh, perfectly. You guys can see back here how it opens up without a problem. So what I'm gonna do, because I poured it all the way over the O-ring to clear it, right? As you guys can see, look, this thing will fits right in there. So I basically poured it over this. That was my kind of my guide. So I got I got pretty good meat. I feel confident that some gray RTV silicone um, here or some you know ultra copper, some heavy duty silicone will hold up to the boost. And um, this I'm gonna use silicone and uh, cross my fingers. <laughs> if it works, that's super cool because I just saved myself 350 bucks and I use some cartridge rolls that seen better days and I mean I just basically use whatever I had in my toolbox I haven't bought a, a new porty kit in a while so I just used some scrap porting uh, porting cartridges and stuff and I pulled it off so yeah hot rodding is not dead like my friend Dane Thompson says so it worked out pretty good now um, I did notice when I had the camera rolling and going through the steps of this is how you you should use this cartridge or whatever um, I never realized that the camera was off and the battery died, but let me just, just tell you guys a little quick recap of what I did. So I started off with these uh, Mac Tools car, um, carbide bits, and they're like, uh, these are for steel, they do make them for aluminum, and if you get them for aluminum, they're not going to get as uh, contaminated and clogged up as quickly, uh, but to, to avoid my steel ones uh, from getting all uh, clogged up and you know, contaminated with aluminum. What I ended up doing was uh, using a lot of WD-40 to prevent the aluminum from sticking and to keep them cool from not burning out and, you know, going dull on me. And I've had these for, man, uh, over 10 years. They're actually not even mine, they're my brother's. They let me borrow them over 10 years ago and uh, he never ports and I, I ported, uh, man, dozens and dozens of uh, raw bodies and stuff from the LS1 days to now, so um, I've, these are really good. Once I remove my heavy uh, material, every you know, like um, all the heavy stuff that I gotta grind off and you know, port, I use those guys because they remove a lot of material very quickly. But um, it's very aggressive. So if you stop somewhere, you're gonna make a crater. Um, you know, they you have to kind of have some strength to it. Um, get a good grip on your on your part that you're porting because it's gonna want to grab and bounce up and down on you so you gotta kind of play with the pressure on the compressor to kind of find that sweet spot like I was doing so um, I found about 50 psi worked pretty good for me on the compressor so once I got rid of my heavy material that I wanted to do and I got that size that I wanted somewhat the shape that I wanted I put them away no more no more heavy cutting right And I moved over to my cartridge rolls, and I really like these guys. Um, they're a little bit more forgiving when you when you kind of stop or slow down in one area. They're not going to dig a big old hole like the other guys, like the cart like the carbides, like those those uh, metal ones. Uh, so these cartridge rolls are a little bit less more more forgiving, but uh, they do range from coarse to fine. So obviously, if you want to remove material to some heavy shaping, you're going to start off with your coarse. As you move up in, in the the grit. Uh, it's going to become finer and it's going to remove less material so polish more the surface that you're porting. So I usually do the end result shaping with all my cartridge rolls, right? Now once I have the perfect shape that I want, I move over to a flapper wheel. And a flapper wheel, it's, um, it's the same thing, it's a little long shank, but it has a, a flapper wheel. Now this thing's off contaminated with WD-40 because I knocked it over by accident, but uh, there, there's various uh, sizes and grits on the flapper wheels too. But basically what the flap, little flapper wheels do is that um, if you leave a little bump or a little crater somewhere, these guys are going to get there and just kind of level everything up. So if you leave a bump, come right and chop that thing off and leave a, a nice little uh, finish for you. So they're little cheap tools that I like to use and they help out a lot, especially because um, those first ones that I use are very aggressive and they leave a bunch of holes. Um, now, the reason um, I kind of 
do a full sweep with the, the carbides in the beginning is because I like to mark everything just so I know that I didn't miss a spot. And um, it makes it kind of harder at the end result because all those little pits and holes and every little mark you make, you gotta erase it or else it's gonna look nasty. So it kind of helps you out to kind of push you that extra mile to make sure that you pour everything as much as you can to make it really nice. But yeah, so um, carbides, cartridges, flapper wheels, and once you do that, you have a pretty much a good finish. But what I like to do is I like to get a cross bus. The cross bus are these guys right here. Okay, and what a cross bus does, it basically gets rid of all the heavy lines that you left and leaves it to a polished finish. Now these go from coarse to fine. So you have a very coarse to very fine. And you should have a product that looks something like this. It's kind of like polishing, kind of like waxing a car. You move from a, a heavy polish to a fine polish. I use a cross bus in that way just to give me that super nice shiny, you know, the nice port and polished look. And it looks really nice, as you guys can see. So, it looks pretty massive. But yeah, um, and now it works. I'll bolt it on for you guys so you guys can see. All right, so here's the throttle body and the snout bolted together. And ta-da! And now it opens. So, we have success. Um, Hopefully silicone holds up and we're winning. But uh, yeah guys, nevertheless, uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'm gonna close this video out here. I'm still waiting on parts, so hopefully they come in pretty soon. And we could fire this thing up and take it over to Kika Fabric 2, get some good tuning on it. So yeah, but uh, stay tuned guys, cause uh, there's a lot coming for Buggy Man. And we might have to do all kind, all kind of little uh, DIYs and stuff to make it happen, but hey, um, that's how you learn and that's how you put together some really cool stuff so uh, so stick around we'll catch you guys on the next video